Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Play Dark Souls. So last time I showed you guys how to open up this shortcut. Um, this time I'm actually going to show you how to make the dragon reappear should you want him back for various reasons. And we actually do want him back. He has something I want. Alright, so... Last time I showed you that if you rest in that bonfire, the dragon's actually going to flee because he's going to get kind of nervous that you're underneath of him. And the easiest way to get him to show back up is you actually walk back across this bridge after resting in a bonfire. Now, he's not going to show up again until you start encroaching... I forget exactly... Up oh, there it is. I caught him out of the corner of my eye. But... Nice and simple, that is how you get him to return, or if you forgot about him, don't forget about him. Just because he flew away doesn't mean that he's never coming back. And now, we are going to do a very big thing for beginners. Um, I'm not actually a big fan of this item myself, but if it's, you know, one of your first times playing, this can be a very useful thing, and I ran the wrong way. <laughs> So, I, uh, I have another character that I'm working on, just in case I want to play with some friends, and it's a uh, faith build. And I was trying the Astura Straight Sword, and ironically... In oh, that was silly. Um, ironically enough, the Astura Straight Sword, it can carry you a bit of the way, but it depends on where you're going and what order you're trying to do things in. And I was doing a lot of things out of order on the faith build. But, uh... Just a little bit of a warning that if you think that your weapon is doing lots of damage, you know, here at a low level zone, you know, just to consider where you're going and, you know, if you feel like you're not doing enough damage, uh, that may be an indication that you might want to go upgrade your gear or go somewhere um, you're more comfortable for farming and get a few levels in you to balance out whatever issue you're having. So if you go into a new zone and you feel like everything's like, you know, hitting you for massive damage, you might want more health. You want might, you might want better armor. Oh, still keeping your marbles all together? Then go ahead. Don't be a nitwit. Never hurts to splurge when your days are numbered. Ah, <laughs> uh, but yes, you might want to reconsider. <sighs> Pardon me. You might want to reconsider. Thank you, Carl. Um, your loadout or what you're using. Um. And each zone kind of has a theme to it as well. Like this first zone, everything's actually kind of physical resistant. Everything has armor on it. Um, so, you know, sometimes piercing weapons are a little bit better, or... Um, you can really use whatever you want to in the first zone. I mean, everything has the low HP. Um, it's true that it does have some armor, so like rapiers aren't going to do a lot of damage until you stab something in the back with them. But here what we're going to do is we're going to re-equip the short bow and some large arrows. Um, this is something I encourage you to do as a hollow, not as a human, unless... Ow. Unless, you, unless you've defeated the uh, bosses for this area. And the reason because uh, behind that is that this does take a little bit of time. Now, if you're having problems with the boss, this weapon can actually be... Hello? No... Um, if you're having problems with this boss, this weapon can be a huge advantage for you. And if you're human, um, the only other thing you could really do is, you know, try summoning somebody to guard your back. However, what we're going to do is, if you come down here with the longbow and a bunch of arrows, we're actually going to aim at this dragon's tail, or not dragon, this drake's tail. Now, I like to find wherever your sweet spot is. I like this spot right here because this tail has a lull in it as it tries to... Oh, wow, really? As this tail tries to reposition. And then what happens is when you shoot that dragon in the tail, you're going to make him very angry, and he's going to come jumping down trying to find you. But when he can't find it, he's going to go right back up onto his perch. Now, before, I used to shoot his tail twice, um, and that does speed up the process. Um, but I've gotten rusty at this, apparently. 
I don't, I don't ever use the bow and arrow. So, I'm going to take my time to do it this way. This is showing you guys how to do it, and because of that, I'm going to save you some time. So, uh, I'll be back once I have this dragon's tail cut. Well, uh, maybe I'll show you guys how long it actually takes. I don't know. You guys should let me know in the comments if you want to see, you know, grinding or nonsense things like this, and I will do it for the next episode. Because this doesn't take a terribly long time, but yes, it does take some time. Yeah, normally I'm farther back, but uh, this thing is a strip bow, and I'm using large arrows, which do have a limited distance behind them. So you do want to be closer if you're going to try to use the large arrows. And also, apparently I'm getting sick, which I'm not very happy about. I haven't gone out in like two or three days. Like I've gone out to get food and whatnot, but... Hurricane closed my job, and I don't have a lot of friends in the area. I've contacted the friends I do have, and all of them are just like, No, I want to stay inside and play Assassin's 3. And I've just been like, Huh. You know, I don't mind watching the game, but I don't like playing the game. Do you want company? And they're like, No, I just kind of want to play the game by myself. <laughs> I kind of understand that. That's also a really common thing in my area. Um, uh, again, I live in the northeast. I don't want to say exactly where, because um, I'm pretty biased about where I live. Um, but I noticed that a lot of people um, and a lot of friends that have either made or been trying to make in the area, um, they all do this very similar thing. So maybe somebody out there, you know, watching, listening, can explain this to me. But uh, I have a lot of people in the area that will complain, like, "Oh, hey, I'm bored," and just like. Oh, well, convenient. I have the day off, and I'm bored. Why don't we go for a walk? Why don't we go shopping? Why don't we go run some errands? Um, why don't we go run out and catch a movie? Oh, there we go. Perfect time. Get the drink sword. Um, so not everything with a tail can have its tail cut off in this game, but a lot of things in this game that can have their tail cut off um, will make a huge difference. Um, but a lot of things that do have a tail can have their tail cut off. So here's the Drake Sword. Um, it's just a very high damage weapon, but, um, if you're wondering, whoops, if you're wondering what the, I just did that twice in a row, if you're wondering what the drawback to it is, um, there's absolutely zero stat scaling on it. Um, so it's just 16 strength and 10 dexterity to wield it. Um, you have a base attack of 200 versus, like, 80 on the Astora Straight Sword, or 97, you know, roughly 100 on the Reinforced Club. So for a beginner, beginner's item, um, especially for a dex build, lies, um, for a strength build, this sword is actually a very good thing to start off with. Um, so now we're going to go on, and oops. here we're going to have some rats. Now these rats can give people a lot of trouble. What I recommend is actually just run up to them with your shield held up, and... Um, when they attack with their claws, their claw can bounce off your shield. So that's a jump attack. That, that's a little jump attack they're doing with there. After they uh, hit their shield, hit your shield with their claw, just counter attack. Um, weapons like the Astoke or the Spear, um, the Rapier, um, are great because you can attack from behind your shield. So you actually don't have to put yourself in any type of vulnerable danger. But normally, that's how you get to here, the Undead Parish. As well as, this is where people are going to be a little bit confused, because normally that gate is down. I'm going to make the dragon fly away with no tail. There he goes, no tail. Now, because I'm making him fly away, I can get him to respawn, and he will have a tail again. I don't think you can keep chopping off his tail, though. Not 100% sure. But I'd rather have full health. I took some silly damage there that I did not intend to take. But yes, you can still parry and repost with this weapon. Um, this weapon should carry you for a good chunk of the game. You could even play the whole game with this. There is a staircase to go up here. I'm not going to go up it yet. Again, I want a little bit more humanity, and I'm approaching um, the grinding zone that I think is, in my opinion, the uh, best for cute. 
the best for if it's like kind of your first time playing through the series. There's also a cute little trick is that come immediately to the right here and then start. Oh, wow. Apparently, I did not make it in time. I was going to say, if you uh, go up that stairwell to the right and you sprint up it and then you run and jump off that platform, you can get behind uh, that drawbridge before they close it because it's one of the men down there that has to close his gate. They retreat behind it and uh, do that. But there you can see a giant boar that I've not addressed until right this second. Uh, there's a number of ways to kill him. First off, you get the Alluring Skulls there, which is one of my favorite items. I used it a lot more in um, Demon Souls, but um, it will draw soul-starved enemies to a location. That guy's just going to sit there the entire time? There's my annoying cell phone alarm, because if that does not wake you up and tell you to pick up your phone... I don't know what other generic ringtone I could put on there. Um, so what you can do is you can throw them down. A lot of people will throw it into that fire there, which is not a bad idea. Because um, the boy will take fire damage, and I wasn't close enough. Yeah, there's a lot of men that were aware of my existence. 